Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how you can build this cargo fire panel for your Boeing 737-800 cockpit. For the beginning you will need the bottom, middle and top plate, as well as two 8 position rotary switches and a push button. Three 15mm hex standoffs I used to screw the layers together and later hold the backlighting panel. To prevent the backlight from lighting up these LEDs, I have lacquered the areas of the panel, but in addition I painted the bottom of the LEDs black. To assemble the needed buttons, you will need the outside and inside parts some labels, three 12mm tactile buttons and some LEDs. The design of these buttons is nearly the same that I have used for the EC buttons on my after overhead panel. You have this outside box here and an inside box. And the difference is that the inside box doesn't cover the top of the outside box but it sits completely inside of this box here. Uh, the main button inside, a uh, tactile button is used. This will be mounted inside of the holder and then you can place the inside box on top of it and because of a small notch on the side of the inside and the outside box it can slide in but it will be prevented from uh, falling out again here. And it is still pushable. The rest is made like the EEC buttons. The two labels are divided into two parts, so the light will be prevented from spreading to the other label where it wouldn't be needed. Yeah, a really simple design and I think this can also be useful for all of you who are building an Airbus or a 767, all these aircraft that use those Cori buttons here and I think this can be a cool Cori button too.
after this panel is assembled, let's come to the configuration in MobiFlight and ProSim. Let's come to the configuration in MobiFlight first and let's have a look to the devices I have added to my Arduino number L. In the MobiFlight modules, you can see the Arduino L is the only one I have connected for this test here. And there are new components L10 up to L28, which are LEDs and buttons. Again, for anyone who is new to this channel, if you want to know more about the configuration in MobiFlight and Prosim, you can watch my dedicated video where I go into every step of this in detail. Or see my last live stream where I'm going to the configuration of the COM panel. There I also go through every step in detail. In Prosim, you will find all the needed variables under config and configuration and there in the combined config tab. And maybe you have guessed this already, you will find them in the fire category. There we have the switches and indicators that we can use. On the switches, you can identify all the values you need by the word cargo here. Yeah, you can see this. The word cargo is in front of all the values you could need. And the same under indicators. Here again, look out for cargo and you will find all the values that you need. Except of one and there I already come to something that is different in this test now from all the others you have seen from me here. Let's start with the test first and I think then you will understand the problem I had. I have prepared already running in the background and now click a run here in MobiFlight. So now we are already able to test some functions here. The detector fault, for example, I can click here in Prosim displays and there you can see the corresponding light is lighting up. Let's test the switches here. Forward to A both and B. This is working like in the software and the aft switch A both and B is working. Now we come here to the test button. And when I push this test button, you can see the two exterior lights are lighting up. And also is this stripe up here lighting up. And in the software, there isn't the discharge um, annunciator not lighting up, but here uh, on my panel. I think the illumination here of this discharge annunciator is correct because let's have a look here to ProSim to the system and there in the fire category we can also find all the lights and when I now again click to the test button you can see the cargo fire discharge light a yellow light is on and I think this must be this uh, annunciator down here but it isn't lighting up in the display software the two exterior lights are on like they are in the software and down here on the hardware and now here comes something that confused me the fire bell a green light is on i thought the fire bell could be this master caution or i think you get the fire warning um button but why is it green and so i the idea came in my mind that this could be this green stripe here and so i have assigned the value to this button here maybe this is right maybe not i think not but uh, i still haven't found out what is uh, the right variable for this stripe up here so and now we come 
to the next problem I ran into here. Prosim comes with this iOS, the instructor station here, where you can uh, simulate all the failures. And here, let's go to the fire category. There, we are able to throw all the failures in the fire category that we want to have here. And when we now start the fire forward cargo failure and say fail now, then the failure is thrown, but nothing is happening. And I think there must be a, a problem here uh, with the display software that it isn't showing it and also the events uh, or the, the FSU IPC variables aren't thrown here um, because when we clear this and make an engine fire then you can see everything uh, is going up like it should and so i think this isn't a general problem but maybe it is a problem with the actual version here i have or in combination with a prepared i'm running version 4.5 at the moment i don't know and so i can't show you a full test here but a little bit of functionality can be shown here let's assume we throw again a cargo forward failure then this forward red light should be lighting up we can see this in movie flight in a moment and now i would push this button here to arm it which i'm doing you can see the light is going on and so is the light here in the display software and now there would be the moment where we discharge the uh, bottle in the cargo room and so we press the discharge button here and wait a moment and now the discharge light is lighting up which it isn't in the software but when we have a look at the system software here then you can see the cargo fire discharge light should be lighted up which it is and so i think this is right at this moment and i also have tested this in the pmdg version of the 737 there the behavior is the same and so i think this hardware is working correctly but there is a problem in the software until now so let's clear this failure here and go back to mobi flight so that you can see one time these uh, warning annunciators lighting up in my case these are the variables l13 and l19 so let's make a test here there you can see the forward warning light is working and under L19 we have the aft warning light. This is working too. So the hardware I think here in this case isn't the problem. This is working. And so even if it is not a full test in this video, I think this panel can be assigned as accomplished. So this was the build and configuration process of this panel. As I said, when I know how to test this panel completely, then I will show this maybe in one of the upcoming live streams. For those of you who have watched my previous panel making videos, these were all well-known components for you. Just some LEDs and some buttons, a little bit of reusing, uh, 3d printed design but this is all you need to build this panel and if you want to build your own panel version at home then you will find every file you need to cut out and engrave the acrylic plates or the 3d print files for the knobs and the buttons in the member section of my website three last holes are open in the pedestal including the main fire panel 
The transponder panel is already designed and the construction process will start in short. So stay tuned for this video. And if you don't want to miss this upcoming episode, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.